This is 2019 and unlike ever before, the election commission in the world's largest democracy has decided to take the fight to fake news. As of now, the EC is watching you the people, your potential unannounced candidates and all the major parties watching them to ensure they don't spread fake news. But does the election commission have the bandwidth and the resources to curb fake news? Also, the election commission will fight fake news in collaboration with Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google and Share Chat. It is a Desi content app, but it has just been clubbed with the world's biggest dominant platforms on social media. And on the show, we have Burgess Y. Malu, the head of public policy, Share Chat. Also, Gen C. Jacob, managing editor of Boom, once again joining us. We'll also be joined by Rakesh Dubudu, the founder of Factly, but also the man who helped the Indian Association of Mobile and Internet, which the Election Commission named, with a report on fake news. So we'll have all of them to talk more about that. Uh, in just a bit, but I just want to start with why Share Chat has been included because we have a newsmaker with us and it's huge. The Desi content app created by three IIT Kanpur graduates. Let me tell you about that in just a bit, a little bit, because this is huge. I just want to show our viewers first what we're talking about. This is the app, the Share Chat app, right here. And if I click on it, it opens its interesting in its colors and obviously you have a news feed you can actually go and see how many languages there are there are 14 languages you can you can choose whichever language you want and you can actually scroll the content and in each of these things that are there as content can actually be shared on whatsapp so there's a lot that's there there's political content there's all kinds of content uh, actually let's just show you what we're talking about what is share chat firstly it's a desi content app created by three kanpur iit iit kanpur graduates uh, it's in 14 Indian languages, it is not in English. So that's important. It's tier two, tier three cities, not Delhi, uh, Bangalore perhaps. And also it is for sharing pictures, uh, greetings, GIFs and text messages. Uh, that's how you get your good morning messages through this app perhaps because that goes to WhatsApp eventually. Uh, it has over 45 million users is what we understand. And there are 200 million shares to WhatsApp every month estimated. Uh, now, what did the election commission actually say about this app? Now, that's important. ShareChat will be cooperating with the, with the election commission in its fight against fake news. Uh, ShareChat is under the vigil of the EC, like all other apps, uh, for fake news. And ShareChat is, has been clubbed with giants like Twitter or Facebook. And it will be giving an input to the election commission to fight fake news. And it has already given an input. That's interesting. There will be quick response channels between the election commission and the app to actually make sure that whenever there is fake news, it is spotted very quickly and action is taken as soon as possible. So let's go straight across to Burgess, who's from ShareChat. Thanks so much, Burgess, for being with us. I just want to start by asking you, uh, how did this come about? Because how is it that you were in the first place clubbed with these big apps, these big platforms, uh, uh, keeping in mind the fact that you're a Desi content platform, in a sense? So we have 45 million users in India, right? That makes us one of India's largest social media platforms and India's largest Indian language social media platform. Um, and we are an Indian company, so we wanted to be responsible and we believe that it would be appropriate for us to reach out directly to the election commission right. through the industry body and ensure that users who are posting on our platform do not get swayed by fake news or, or bad content. Yeah. How many users would you say you have? So we have over 45 million users today and uh, ac who are active. And we have 45 over 60 million active million, users. Yes, and we have over 65 to 70 million registered users on our platform. All right. Uh, how are you going to be curbing fake news? What have, what, what have you put in place to curb fake news? And that too in 14 different languages. So we have a, a very robust team of folks who manage our community operations at ShareChat. We have tied up with a fact-checking agency to, to look at content that users report. Um, if they believe that the content is not true. Um, we also are working with the EC, so they have a, a, a straight line of contact with us 24 hours a day. We will take down content that they deem inappropriate for during the election period uh, within three hours. Um, so that's, that's, that's a lot that we're doing. Besides this, every piece of content that leaves ShareChat goes out with, our, with the user's user ID as well as the logo of the, the platform. So if you see a video from our platform, and you come back and tell me this is fake news, I know exactly who has posted it. So there's a, there's a, a bit of traceability. So that's that how is it's different from WhatsApp. St yeah, straight into the app. Unlike right. WhatsApp, where you don't know where the content you know, came about from. So even if this you'll content be able to take it off, but will you be able user, to in any way uh, you know, initiate action through the election commission from the source? 
Sorry. I, I so if, if you are able to find out the source, yes. will you and uh, has the EC and you have you actually spoken about how they'll be in a position to take action against the source? Yes. Yes. So because every user who joins our platform has to give in his mobile number, his or her mobile number. Right. I just so, did that. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's a it's a, a very quick way for us to find out who has posted the content on our platform. Okay. Interesting. I, I also want to ask you. In terms of what you've seen politically already, because I saw that your app has a lot of political well posts on it uh, for the BJP, the Congress. You can't miss politics in India during this this time of yeah, year. Yeah, of course, I understand that. But the point I'm trying to make is that one of the trending topics, even right. on your app. Exactly. Uh, in that context, if you had to go back to the last assembly elections, whichever you choose, really, uh, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan. In that context, how much of a spike has there been in users from the last assembly elections to now? So we haven't seen uh, a user number spike, but we have seen uh, users actively, you know, looking at this kind of content. We have seen a lot of politicians joining our platform. Um, today we have a lot of national political parties, chief ministers, members of parliament, a whole host of politicians who are looking at joining ShareChat and using the platform to reach out to voters in tier two, tier three cities, because that's where our platform is focused at. Yeah. Um, and users who want to consume political content yeah. in their own languages, in their native language, yeah. find ShareChat the home to be at. All right, just two questions for you. WhatsApp is encrypted. I understand your this app is not encrypted and, and therefore it is an advantage. Uh, this app is an advantage over WhatsApp in that context for fighting fake news? One could say that, but we are not a chat application primarily. We are a social media platform. We are a content platform. So, the, so it I can't chat with you, you're saying? You can chat with us, but that's not how the platform was designed. I mean, you can chat with someone on Instagram, right? But you don't use Instagram as a chat platform primarily. Ah, okay. So, right. so we are not a chat platform primarily. Right. Uh, so that's yeah, that that helps us, I guess. Okay, but you're saying that there is an advantage when it there comes to there is an advantage, yes. Taking on fake, uh, taking on fake news compared to what WhatsApp can do because yes. it's end-to-end -end encryption. Yes. Right. Okay, I'm going to bring in uh, everyone else now in the discussion. Thanks so much uh, for that. Stay with us. I, I have a lot of questions for you because you would be able to contribute not just as a representative of ShareChat now, but somebody who understands how fighting fake news is so tough in this day and age. So w what is the one thing that we are talking about now? What will be the action against fake news? Because the, the chief election commissioner, when he spoke to the press, uh, he ma made it clear that there will be action that will be taken against fake news by the social media platforms. But the question is, what will be the action? First, listen to what the chief election commissioner said. To keep a check on election violations and menace of fake news and hate speech during the election period, social media platforms have told us that they have appointed dedicated grievance officers to take necessary and prompt action against the contents published on their platforms. Social media platforms have committed to take action on any content reported by designation of designated officers of ECI also, which violates various electoral laws. All right, so how is it that the election commission actually plans to curb fake news? Take a look at this. They've got Facebook, they've got Twitter, they've got Google, YouTube, and also ShareChat, as we were talking about it on board. Platforms, these platforms, will be taking action in, on the content that is reported by the election commission. And for this, they have dedicated officers, dedicated grievance officers that they have appointed themselves. Political ads will have to be certified by the election commission's monitoring committee. So that's an important point out there. But what are the unanswered questions in all of this? How will the action against fake news be actually tough to pull off? Because what action will social media platforms actually take? Will that action be limited to taking down the fake news or reducing its visibility? And what's the fine line between clamping down on fake news and freedom of expression? Very important point. So let's get started on that. Uh, I just want to go to Gen C on this first. Gen C, uh, number of questions, which is the most important one for you? Which is the toughest one to answer? Because that fine line between freedom of expression to me is a tough one. Yeah, Amitosh, uh, that is true. Uh, that's, that's, that fine line is, uh, we don't really know uh, when do you uh, move on to one side or the other side. In fact, I was speaking to one of uh, you know, my sources at uh, the election commission in one of the states, and uh, the, the, the gray area that even they have admitted uh, even after all the announcements that they have made, is the fact that how do you determine that any uh, any user who's pushing out any content, whether it's in in a form of advertising or in the form of a political post, right. he or she is not connected or connected or not connected uh, to the candidate. Because the candidate, when he's uh, going for the nomination process, he's revealing all the accounts that he's directly associated with. But what about those hundreds of supporters yeah. who are pushing out all the content 
and that's a loophole that every candidate will want to exploit and the election commission cannot do anything about that yeah okay uh, rakesh uh, dubudu uh, you worked on a fake news report with the Indian Association of, uh, for Mobile uh, that is working uh, with, uh, as, as, as it was said, work in progress. And I'll bring that up in just a bit. But how, how does this really happen? What kind of action can you actually take against fake news? That's, my, that's, that's the basic problem out here that we're not able to understand. Yeah, primarily what we need to understand is something that is not acceptable offline should be acceptable online. I mean, that is a core principle. You can't have two separate rules for offline and online. In fact, in the schedule that was released by the election commission, they have clearly right. said that advertising on social media is equivalent to advertising on electronic media. So in other words, they're equating social media with electronic media. So you know, the ads go through the monitoring committee, the district committee, where you'll have one social media in charge. There are two issues that we have to be very clear about. Like Jen C was saying, uh, strictly speaking, the model code of conduct applies to only parties and contesting candidates. You know those who are in campaign right of course but what about those hundreds of people you know supporters or general public who keep on posting i think the only way we can cut that is reduce virality or delete such posts hmm. anything that can vitiate the free and fair uh, process of electioneering right other than that i don't think uh, you know anything that goes beyond this is is possible at okay. such a large scale we have right. hundreds and thousands of people posting all right, I, I just want to also uh, bring up one other aspect, uh, and we'll go to the bite uh, from the Chief Election Commissioner now, which is the second uh, claim. And this is very simple, because in this, he talks about how there's a pilot project with IIT uh, students or graduates, uh, and then he goes on to talk about how there's a work in progress with the uh, you know other associations like yours, uh, the one that you did a fake news report for, Rakesh. So let's bring that up, what Sunil Arora said, a work in progress and pilot project, two aspects, because that indicates one thing that the election commission knows that it's a first in their fight against fake news. They're doing this for the first time and it's not really easy. He has taken his stock of the IT applications being developed by our team and <coughs> maybe we'll introduce as a pilot project in some states to start with. Internet and Mobile Association of India in consultation with IES, with ECI, is formulating a set of code of ethics for intermediary online platform. This is a work in progress. All right, so some of the questions that emerge from this, will fake news fight cover all platforms? Will the election commission be able to cover all the platforms? Take a look at these. What about WhatsApp? These are some of the questions that we don't have an answer to, which has end-to-end -end encryption. All right, uh, how will party supporters be curbed from spreading fake news? And Chinese app like TikTok, they've not been covered in all of this. Fake news will be fought, we know, on Indian platform ShareChat, which you just talked about. So in this context, why are some apps being left out, some apps being brought in? We're not quite sure about this. So I just want to go to you uh, right now, uh, Burgess, because ShareChat has been brought into the picture, but TikTok, Telegram, some other apps, they've not been brought in. That doesn't make sense. I don't think it's it's the fault of the EC. I think it's also about platforms that want to be responsible. Right. Uh, there is a likelihood that other platforms or uh, other companies don't look at India so seriously. Right. And maybe that's the reason why they're not uh, in talks with EC. Um, platforms you don't like know for ours, sure. Pla we don't know for sure, but yeah. platforms like ours, platforms like Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, we WhatsApp, all want to be... How, how will WhatsApp do it? I don't understand. Uh, so I think it, the other part about this is WhatsApp, I know for a fact, is, is looking at taking down spam accounts. Uh, they are doing a lot of things, right? They have, right. They have written in, in a letter to, to, the, to yeah, EC. Yeah, we know about that. But I think just to add to what you were saying, yeah. it's not all about fake news also, right? There's also this, this period between... Um, the date of the elections and 40, 48 hours before that, yeah. when uh, politicians are not supposed to be making public speeches or announcements. And I think that's one thing that the EC is looking at, that moratorium between uh, just before the election date, right. uh, where the, the EC wants to reach out to platforms and ensure that uh, these platforms are Okay, policed. all right. I just want to take a short break right now. Rakesh and Gen C, uh, hold your thoughts because I know you want to say a lot about this. Uh, what is it that the EC can do, can't do? Why are the platforms not on uh, this entire fake news radar of theirs. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. This is India versus Fake News. Welcome back. Uh, we're trying to answer a number of questions. Let's go straight across to Rakesh. Rakesh, I'm trying to understand, 
is this foolproof uh, what uh, the election commission is doing or is this just one step a good step in the right direction uh, i would i would go with the second one of course this is not foolproof it's the first step in the right direction yeah. uh, one of the issues with social media platforms has been the misuse in terms of uh, advertising yeah. which i think has been fixed to a certain extent now with uh, most platforms opening up their ad platforms uh, i mean more transparency in terms of who is sponsoring who is paying right. that is the first step with respect to section 126 the rp act which burgess was referring to uh, i think that i don't think uh, even the platforms will be able to contain except okay. for uh, verified social media profiles of leaders you know you can't Uh, uh, stop 900 million people from posting political comments in yeah. the last 48 hours. Absolutely, and that is not I going agree. to happen. At least, and at least with verified social media profiles, yes, because people are going to submit their social media profiles to the rapid debate. Right. That can happen. But how can you stop party the, supporters, party workers, and all of that? I understand really, that. I mean, okay, Gen C, 900 million voters. Yes, absolutely. Gen C, I just want to understand from you, big picture, in this election, how much fake news will we see now? <laughs> Uh, Jency, can you hear me? All right, I'm asking yeah, you, big you. picture, how how much fake news do you think we'll see now? How much of it will be reduced? Well, Amitosh, I don't think it is going to be reduced at all. In fact, we are fighting an uphill battle right. uh, with uh, you know just uh, about roughly about two months left for the elections now, or in the, in different phases that it is going to happen. We're going to see more and more. uh political misinformation and disinformation uh, that is going to spread on all these platforms no matter what the ec has said and the fact that i do know uh, that the ec has its heart in its right place yeah. but i think they have been a bit too late uh, to enter the space what were they doing in the entire years of 2017 and 18 when there were several state elections that were happening right. pilot proje- projects could have been held then why didn't they do it then Strong. how can you come right into the bang into the middle of 2019 elections of a general election and say that you're going to uh, okay, you know, try made. out all these projects point made. i mean I, i really can't fi- figure out you know why they are so late yeah okay uh, this comes from a fact checker take him seriously he knows what he's talking about because what he's saying is that the election commission has has come up with a great step but at the end of the day it's perhaps a too little too late and that that does not mean that there will not be fake news in this election in fact perhaps just the same amount all right I want to just end with uh, with our representative from ShareChat, uh, Burgess. Uh, I have one question for you. Can WhatsApp learn from ShareChat when it comes to fighting fake news? I wouldn't want to say that on TV, but we we, we are we are a platform that's that's catering to Indian users, and WhatsApp's biggest market today is India. So hopefully they do. You would, you say hopefully they do, and if what's in so in so far as I understand, you've had deliberations with the Election Commission. Uh, yes. And is there something you've told them that is different from what other platforms have told them? In uh, because you're an Indian app. Well, the the, the fact is that um, I think all of us are, are united in our fight against problematic content on our platforms. Right. Uh, we all want to be responsible. Okay. It cannot be you know a, a one 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 platform is doing better than the other. Right. It's we are all in this together. All right. Okay. Uh, Burgess, uh, Rakesh, and Jency, I appreciate you coming on board. Uh, it's just been great to have all three of you on this show. This is India versus fake news, and the Election Commission coming up with a great, great policy. But is it something that's going to work? You got your answers right here on NETV 24/7. Thanks so much, all of you, for joining me.